five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition and lift off. As you can see, Falcon 9 has successfully Power telemetry nominal. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center, carrying our stack of Starlink satellites to orbit. We're going to throttle the nine Merlin engines down in preparation for max Q or, ma supersonic. or maximum aerodynamic pressure. This is the largest structural load that the vehicle will see during ascent, so slowing it down a little bit will help the vehicle pass through that short period. Max Q. And there we heard the call out for Max Q. Now, in about a minute, we're going to have three events happen in quick succession back to back. The first one is main engine cutoff, or MECO. This is where all nine of those M1D engines are going to shut off, and that'll help slow the vehicle down in preparation for the second event, stage separation. As the name would suggest, this is when the first and second stages will separate from, the, from each other. The first stage will start its way back to Earth. Max, chill now. We heard the chill in. We're flowing some super chilled liquid oxygen into the turbo pumps on that second stage engine. Uh, the first stage after stage separation will make its way back to Earth. Second stage will continue its journey with the third event, SES-1, or second engine start one. This is where MVAC will light up and begin to propel second stage along with the Starlink satellites into orbit and main engine cutoff will be coming up in 10 seconds. Everything continues to look nominal there with that vehicle trajectory. And Miko, stage separation confirmed. All right, there on your screen, ignition and throttle up complete. as the MVAC nozzle begins to develop that bright glow, we can see that all three events, like I said, quick succession. Um, on the left-hand side of your screen, we have the first stage. Uh, in the background behind the first stage, I absolutely love this view, we got some night lights of the Space Coast behind it. Uh, the first stage is actually... Bearing separation confirmed. Uh, there we heard the call out for fairing step, and we can see that stack of Starlink satellites there. Great views. Everything looks nominal there with our second stage. As it heads towards its targeted drop-off orbit, first stage is going to execute two burns in order to make its way back to Earth. If you look closely, you can still see the night lights of the Space Coast there in the upper left corner. The first of the two burns that first stage will execute is the entry burn where three of the M1D engines will reignite. This will help to slow the stage down as it re-enters the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere. The second burn is the landing burn. This is a single engine burn that brings the vehicle speed signal that brings the speed down rapidly in order to land on the drone ship. So there are both shots that we have on screen um, are actually both of the of the second stage. We can see the large plume on the left-hand side. Everything continues to look nominal. So there, we can see that second stage uh, vacuum engine. This engine will power the second stage to its targeted orbit. What you can't see on screen is the other end of the second stage where the 60 Starlink satellites are stacked and awaiting deployment later on in our mission this morning. Starlink satellites operate over 60 times closer to the Earth than traditional satellites, resulting in much lower latency. 
For those of you that might not be familiar, latency is the time that it takes to send data from one point to the next. So in this context, it's the time it takes to send data. Second stage is following a nominal trajectory. Good call out there for nominal trajectory for second stage. Um, so latency, in this context, it's the time that it takes to send data from the ground to the satellite and then back. When satellites are far away from Earth, latency is high. We're talking 550 milliseconds or more. This prevents activities like video calls and online gaming. When satellites are close to Earth, like the Starlink satellites, latency is low, more like 20 to 40 milliseconds versus 550 milliseconds. This enables video calls and online gaming with an experience similar to fiber or cable. And because Starlink is a satellite network, you're not limited by ground infrastructure. That's one of the main reasons why people who live in rural or remote areas don't have access to high-speed internet, because running the fiber or the cable necessary to get them connected is just too expensive. The Starlink kit comes with everything you need to get connected, including your Starlink, also known as Dishy McFlatface, your Wi-Fi router, power supply, and cabling. The hardware comes pre-connected in the box, so all you have to do is download the Starlink app, plug it in, find the best install installation spot for your Dishy, and you can get connected Stage to one FTS is saved. You can get connected to the internet in a matter of minutes. Startup. Stage one entry burn startup. And there we can see on your screen startup of that. First of two burns, the entry burn. This lasts 20 seconds. As I mentioned earlier, we have reignited three of the nine Merlin engines at the base of the first stage vehicle. Stage one entry burn shut down. And shut down of those three engines. So the reason we perform the entry burn is we want to slow the first stage down as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. As you can tell by the energy there on the grid fins, we can see that it's going pretty fast and we want to slow the velocity down as it re-enters the atmosphere. Second stage is on a nominal trajectory. We heard the call out there that second stage is on a nominal trajectory. The next event that we have coming up will be the landing burn for the first stage, as the name suggests. Uh, this is when we will be attempting to land on our drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You which is currently holding position uh, a, hun a couple hundred miles off the coast of Florida in the Atlantic. A couple hundred miles off the coast of Florida in the Atlantic Ocean. Everything continuing to look good with the second stage and our Starlink satellites. Also signal stage one, Cape Canaveral expected. Stage one landing burn. So we heard the call out that the landing burn for stage one has begun. We can start to see the plume there on our drone ship cam on the left hand side of your screen. Hopefully we'll be able to maintain video signal through landing. Stage one landing leg deploy. Okay, the landing legs are out. Terminal guidance. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like we weren't able to maintain that video signal. We'll, we'll bring that back to you as soon as we can, as well as a status update on that landing. Everything continues to look stage good. Stage two FTS is saved. Everything continues to look good there with second stage. Stage one landing confirmed. All right, we heard it. We couldn't see it, but we did hear verbal confirmation that we had a successful landing of that booster. Marking our 70 also signal stage two from the Cape is expected. This marks our 77th successful recovery of an orbital class there rocket, and the ninth landing of this particular booster. Uh, like I mentioned before, this is the first time that we've launched and landed a Falcon 9 first stage nine times. Nominal orbit insertion. And just like that, we heard confirmation of a good orbit. So at this point. Stage two is going to coast for a little bit, actually for the next 35 minutes or so. So hang tight. We'll see you back here at T plus 45 minutes for a second stage relay. Welcome back to our live coverage for this Starlink mission. We had an on-time liftoff at 6.01 a.m. Eastern time, and we had a successful ninth flight and landing for that first stage booster. 
Our second stage is still looking good and on a nominal trajectory and getting ready for SES2 or second engine start to in just a couple of seconds. It'll be a very short one second burn of our MVAC engine. Looks like we might be having a little bit of trouble with our ground stations. We'd like, we might not be able to get video. We'd like to bring it to you, but we're gonna listen in for the call out on the net to confirm SECO. Like I said, this will be a quick one second burn. Data looks nominal for second good stage there. Okay, we heard the confirmation there that we had good orbit, so that means that that quick one second burn was successful. We have another coast phase before we deploy this next batch of Starlink satellites into orbit. During this time, the spacecraft will begin to spin along its central axis, and that will give the Starlink satellites the momentum they require to space themselves out over time after deployment. While this happens, sit back and enjoy some Space Jams. We'll see you back here at T plus one hour and four minutes. Welcome back once again to our live coverage. We had an on-time liftoff at 6.01 a.m. Eastern time from Kennedy Space Center. Our Falcon 9 first stage successfully returned to Earth after its ninth flight, a first for our boosters. And as for our second stage, which you see there on your screen, We've successfully executed two burns of that MVAC engine, and we're now getting ready to deploy our Starlink satellites in just a few seconds. At this point in time, the second stage began to rotate along its central axis in order to give the satellites the momentum they need to space themselves out from each other after deployment. So at this point, let's listen in for the call out of that payload deployment. Starlink deploy confirmed. And there you can see on your screen the tension rod being released and the Starlink satellites are slowly separating away from the second stage. Shortly, they will deploy their solar arrays and over the next few days and weeks, they'll distance, them, distance themselves out from each other and use their onboard ion thrusters to make their way to operational orbit. And with that, we'll be bringing our webcast to a close. Thank you to the range and FAA for supporting this mission. And to all our viewers, happy Pi Day and thanks for joining us.